Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the 343industries.org community forum last play of XCOM 2. My name is Red Star Rocket, and when I left you last time, we were just deciding on which uh, promotion we were going to give Boss. Now, the question was of whether we should take Guardian, uh, which grants a 50% chance for extra shots when Overwatch is chosen, I was wondering if that would combine with threat assessment to potentially allow him to give multiple Overwatches to another soldier. For example, to uh, Kiko, which obviously would be really, really useful. But ultimately, I couldn't find any information on that, so I'm not sure that would be the case. It's, I suspect it's probably just a personal perk, it doesn't apply to the threat assessment protocol. And given that a 50% chance in XCOM is only a 50% chance when it's a negative effect, it's a 0% when it's a beneficial effect with these things, I think we're going to go with whatever Vigilant is. While that gives us less potential for damage and things, I mean, at least we are going to get it every turn if we uh, need to double move somewhere and get an Overwatch out. Um, and of course, we can always find a use for it. Certainly it'll help with a slightly more mobile playstyle. So we're going to go for that there. We do also have some personal combat sims. Now this is a superior aim, and I don't actually know if we have that on uh, our sniper yet. We don't have anything on him, so we are probably just going to pop that on him there. Just to ensure that, as far as, our, as possible with our snipers, we're putting out maximum levels of damage. We also have a couple of weapon upgrades to go out. The first one of these is an advanced expander magazine, which increases the magazine size by two, so we're definitely going to give that uh, as a tie, just because he's getting very, very heavy use of his primary weapon. After that, we've got a laser sight and a... Uh, Expanded magazine again, so the stock may be not so useful. We may go for the expanded magazine here. But again, the stock has proven its worth on a couple of occasions if we need exactly one point of damage in a pinch. So we may uh, skip that for now. And we'll, I think we'll just give the laser side to uh, Blue actually, as he does have the Harrier ability. So Making sure that we're enabling him to crit people when they're in the open as often as possible is probably a good idea. And I think then we have to stock it in quite far down to find more weapon upgrades, but again it doesn't hurt so we'll pop the expanded magazine on uh, Slick here. Hopefully let him demolish a bit more often. And obviously it'll combine very well with his free reload power. So with that out of the way, let's head back to the world map. And I think for this video, just as that avatar counter is starting to get a little worryingly high, we're probably going to take out this facility here. Now, obviously this is a lot of enemies, and there are a couple of worrying enemies in there. We have an Andromedan, we also have an Archon, neither of which I'm fond of. But that's what we've got to do in order to keep that avatar counter in a sensible place. So, we're going to be taking on Operation Foolish God here. And let's hope it goes reasonably well. Now this is another mission where there's no timer, so for our squad selection, once again we can be a wee bit more flexible. And with that in mind we are going to bring uh, our snipers as well, so probably give Kiko a rest again. Uh, we'll bring Boss along, just to be our captain. Uh, we'll also bring Ty, we'll bring Slick, just to and she've got maximum demolition. After that, I think we'll go with Morgan, Blue, and Gamble. And this way, once again, we're trying to use as many members of the Spartans as we can, but more importantly, we're going to have a very, very nice uh, set of bases covered here. We've got the hacking with Boss if we need to hack anything, consider it unlikely, but you never know. We've got uh, Ty ready to do some major damage and put, I have put a hell of a lot of shredding on, quite frankly, when we encounter uh, that Andromedan. So let's start outfitting. Actually, let's decide who's going to be getting what armour first. As the skeleton suit, I'm not sure who'd want to have that. Obviously, Gamble would be a good option there, simply because 
it'll enable him to hopefully find a slightly higher spot. But again, Morrigan might be an option. As it grants a little bit of extra mobility. And again, given we're not into a time limit for this, I think we'll go with Morrigan here. There we are. Spider suit and battle scanner, that'll do nicely. Ty as well, I think here we will uh, give him the other exosuit. We'll just replace that with trace rounds. I don't think we have any other weapons, I think we're still in rocket launchers only, but that's no big deal. And his arm has gone a little wonky there, we'll just quickly put that one together. There we are. In terms of the rest of our equipment, I think AP rounds might be a good idea for Gamble, but again, Talon rounds might be a good idea as well, so we have a lot of ammunition to distribute at any rate. Let's start with Blue. We will pass him, I think, uh, the Talon rounds, just to make sure he's getting as big a crit chance as possible, hopefully get some guaranteed crits, and if that doesn't work, we'll give him the Frost Bomb anyway, and that way there's always something he can do. Which only really leaves Gamble at this point, so he'll be getting the AP rounds. We may also give him the Acid Grenade, just in case we get a pot of reinforcement somewhere, so he can hopefully run to that and then just toss the Acid on it. And I'm looking at this, and I think that's about all we can take here. Certainly it's uh, a little odd to have so few items assigned, but this is what we have assigned, so let's get on with this. Operation Foolish God to sabotage an alien facility. Fingers crossed it'll be a good one. Sky Ranger deployed. Menace ready to deploy. Resistance contacts tipped us to an alien facility apparently conducting research tied to the Avatar project. We're moving in to take out the site and do whatever we can to slow their progress. Approach the designated target position and place the X4 charges. Then move to the evac point for immediate extraction. Once you're clear, we'll make sure that facility is out of commission for good. So, for this one, um, again, we are going to be doing one. Broadly similar to the operations we've had previously, taking on mission sites, although this one isn't strictly speaking a stalling mission. It's just a way of stalling the Avatar counter. And given that uh, I think this may be our first episode in December, I can't remember when the last one went up, we may as well start calling it the Advent Calendar at this point. So we'll be hoping to set that back a bit here as we head into the wilderness of East Asia. Coordinates are locked in. Move to designated position and place the X4 charges. Lock and load, Deltas. And here we've already got quite an interesting one. Is our spawning area is extremely vertical. I don't like this at all, to be frank. Moving. That said, the fact that we do have a couple of very, very large buildings here could be very, very useful as. If we're in luck, there'll be a lot of open ground between us and this final facility over here. So Gamble will be able to just rain death and destruction down on people. Understood. Moving out. And we're just going to make a quick move with Morrigan here. And then we're going to be a little cautious, just for once. And we're going to pop a scanner up here. Just have a quick look inside these buildings, see if we can spot where the turret is on these roofs. I suspected we've got one over there. Doesn't look to be anything else in the building though, which is good. For now we're just gonna pop tie up here. Got it, moving. 
so that next turn we will be able to run forward and either break concealment or if we can have a better look around and spot some of the stuff find out where the enemy are, hopefully get around and fire off against them. And I think we'll pop blue. Uh, actually, to be frank, we may just pop him down here. Make okay. certain there's nothing on this side of the building before we move boss, just in case there's something over here and we need to use the Mimic Beacon. Which would be fairly disastrous at this point, but... As it turns out, we've done all right there. Also worth noting, we do have a ladder over here to get under the roof, so we'll probably be taking that. And Slick hasn't revealed anything there, so... We're just going to stack us yeah. up on him. And we'll even move uh, Gamble up a bit here as well. That's affirmative. Ready to engage. So we're going to start by popping Boss up here just in case there's something that hiding on uh, that part of the roof. I doubt it, but it's possible. Fortunately, the concern is a little unwarranted as of uh, there. In the meantime, we are going to bring uh, Ty forward just to here. Just make certain we can spot the turret and work out uh, which tiles it can see. And again, with that in mind, we're just going to bring Morrigan up to here. Getting it done. So she can continue to keep an eye on the situation without worry of being revealed herself by charging into a, an occupied tile. And Slick, we're just going to pop next to her. Move, move, move. I think. We also have uh, Blue move up just to here. Affirmative. Moving out. Again, we are trying to keep an eye on the right, make sure there's nothing lurking over there, which could potentially reveal us at a bad time. And since that appears to be mostly clear as of now... Yeah, we'll... Uh, we'll probably just pop tie in the open here. Which is a little unorthodox, but... We're going to be safe enough at this point. Or at least that hope would be safe enough. We'll also just move boss up to here. Getting into position. Set up ambush. Before we do anything else with Mar we are going to have a quick look over here with Morgan. As if there's another part around here I want to know. That said, that doesn't seem to be, so we may just open up with a nice, uh, quick demolition from Slick here. And that doesn't appear to be providing cover, so we're just going to sit this half cover here, but that's fine. And I'm thinking as well here, we're just going to uh, pop tie into this half cover here, which, yeah, it's going to activate the turret, but we're just going to demolish it anyway, and... This is just a way to uh, find out if there's any other enemies. They found us. And we don't seem to spot anything, which is just fine. Now we're just going to pop Gamble Confirmed. out here, as that's probably going to provide high cover for most of the map, while still uh, allowing him to get plenty of shots off. No problems with line of sight or anything, unless they come down this side, but then we'd really have to find a way to destroy this thing in order to do that, and you wouldn't be in cover anyway, so that's not such a big deal. And we'll just start here with a nice easy demolition from Slick. And 
those who are wondering, we have chosen slick there rather than tie, not because of the extra ammunition, but just in case we suffered any uh, strange floating turrets again. We have had that happen before on occasion. And that's not something I'd like to repeat anytime soon, as far as possible. On Overwatch. And in retrospect, I probably should have moved blue before anything else there, but never mind. We're just going to pop him up to here. Affirmative. Just do everything we can to avoid accidentally revealing another Good to go, sir. Take defensive stance. And again, I am a little uncomfortable with this map as it's, again, as I've said before, very, very vertical indeed. Awful lot of spots here where I'd be worried about running into enemies who are in high cover. But also a lot of places where we could move but we'd have very restricted sight lines. So we're going to have to be a bit cautious with our movement here. And I think we've revealed two pods there. One with a codex, one with an archon. But that's actually not quite as big a deal as it could be. Certainly, I think... No, if we move there, we would be revealed. And let's check here to see if popping slick here is going to reveal us. I don't think it will. That's fine, so we'll take a turn and load here. Hopefully they'll patrol into us. And we'll be able to get off a round of Overwatch fire, but just in case, we are going to bring Morrigan back very, very slightly. Orders confirmed. On the move. As I do want to avoid having her uh, be revealed during the enemy scamper move. She can still see those two, so that's fine. Now we don't have our, uh, we don't have our usual Overwatch specialist here, so there are a couple of things to be a bit cautious of here, but I doubt it's going to be a huge deal. Roger that. The default setting on this rifle still pours a lot of damage on a lot of targets. And I do hope we're not going to be jumped by three pods at once again. I really can't be asked to deal with that two missions in a row. Target down. And that captain appears to have just not spotted us. Not sure quite what's going on here. This thing we've frozen a little bit. And if perhaps it was moving all the uh, enemy soldiers individually there. Which is one possibility. Moving to position. We'll have a quick look. <laughs> a 99% crit chance. We could do this, but that would activate that other enemy pod. So, what I'll probably do here. And you know, I'm just looking at this. A 99% chance for a dead eye kill. I think we'll just go with a dead eye here. Seems like the most sensible option. Easy enough. Target neutralized. And of course you just get a free action to reload as well, which is always good. Reloaded. We're just gonna retreat Morrigan to her original spot. And I did notice there was something over there, so I'm a little hesitant to move Tyrone up. Just for the moment. So I think we'll repeat the same oh. tactic we did before and go and overwatch. But before we do that, we are once again approaching the end of our recording time, so as usual, there'll be a short break in the video. Don't go anywhere, and I will see you in just a moment. Hello and welcome back. 
So here we are just going to take another uh, quick round of Overwatch. With luck, we will have uh, an enemy squad patrolling to us. Though they seem to have lost interest in moving, which is a little concerning. So for now, we're just going to put Morrigan here. Hopefully this won't get her revealed. And we can see a second enemy pod there, so... With that in mind, I think we will take out, start by taking out this Viper. As with luck, we'll be able to show you, kill that, but then also avoid engaging the Archon pod. Slick has the ammunition in the... He doesn't quite have the range for it, right. As what I'd like to do here is I would like to pop on a uh, chain shot. This was probably... This could be a good option as well. We may, however, heal the bullet set just to put the guaranteed damage on and ensure that uh, we have hit, as otherwise it could potentially move to flank us. We haven't done quite as much damage as we'd like there, would have liked to hit for the maximum, but again, it's not a big deal. I'm just trying to look for spots here where uh, we'll be able to get a shot off against that codex. Without exposing ourselves to its clone, but I don't think there are any. So we'll have a quick look with uh, Blue anyway. And sadly those are not good odds. Do we have a stock on his weapon? We do, so that's fine. We can just take this out, even if it misses. We've hit for 6 damage even though it graced, which is great. Now we are going to bring Morrigan just as far back as we can here, as we really, really, really want to avoid ending up in a situation where she's flanked and revealed out of cover. Moving. Everyone else, however, we are just going to pop uh, of watch. Take them out from there, Delta. And we have revealed this pod here, and that's not good. Let's hopefully get off uh, a round of the watch fire. What a waste! to break Morrigan's cover here, I have an idea. As we could perhaps move to there, axe the codex, and then just move up and take this sectoid out. But then of course we would need a way to deal with that Archon, so... Let's start by trying to put some damage on this Archon, see how that goes. And that's gone really, really well. So this, we may even be able to do this without Morrigan here, with a bit of luck. No, we won't. Right. Let's have a quick look. Well, that pistol does a worryingly small amount of damage, that's a little frustrating. But it's not the end of the world, and of course, if we can take out this uh, codex, as we probably can with boss with little to no difficulty, 
then the only thing we really need to do is clear this area here, as the sectors will almost certainly attempt some sort of mind control, rather than uh, going for a damaging attack. So we'll move Blue up a bit. And I think we'll just, uh, actually let's take that shot with boss first, just make certain of everything. No, let's be, let's be sensible. First things, absolutely first. We will uh, move Ty, we'll get him out of the uh, danger zone. Moving to position. And then I think who's left to move? Just Gamble. So Gamble will pop, pop back here. Heading there now. And then we'll move boss forward. Oh, no we won't because there's a chance the Sactroid could move to flank him if he were to go there. We'll just leave him where he is and we'll uh, take out this codex. I'll just check, actually, is this a stock or an advanced stock? It's an advanced stock, that's fine. Not that it matters in the end. All clear! Locked and loaded. We're green to go. I'm ready. As for Morgan at this point, we're just going to pop her in here. Moving to designated coordinates. And we will pop her in Overwatch as a just in case measure, but I don't expect to need to use that. And he has made what is quite possibly the worst tactical decision he could have there. So not really a whole lot of benefit to that, to be perfectly frank. The aliens have found a way to mind control them now. So I want to see just how high uh, Blue's critical chance is here, so we're just going to move him straight up. As we can see, he has been able to get a 95% crit chance, so I think we can safely assume we're going to crit this. It's a guaranteed kill anyway, but I just want to find out how reliable that crit is, as much as anything. And a whole 16 damage. Oh, shoot! Oh, that was a silly, silly, wasteful mistake there. Oh, that was completely unnecessary. I'm annoyed at myself for that, to be frank. Very annoyed indeed, but alas, occasionally you do silly things. Unfortunately, we've gotten away with that one, as she's still in concealment. That's still a very. Confirmed. That's one of those little mistakes that you make, but which are very, very annoying. Put it that way. Stay quiet. And just to be extra careful, we are going to uh, hunker her down here. I think we can hear a droid or something over there. Back so, actually we'll be a little boss here. Hopefully they'll walk into us while we're on Overwatch. If they don't, it's not a big deal. We'll move up, see if we can spot them. So they're most likely going to be in the building itself. Uh, last time we had one of these missions, we did run into a meet on the sectoid right here in the loading bay. So I will hope to avoid that. It's a possibility. There may also be another turret either here or up here. So actually, just as a thought, with that in mind, we're going to bring blue all the way to here. As if there is something out there, we want to find it now. And that's perfect. We'll just move up and demolish the ground into that. And then barring any floating turrets, we should be fine.
we actually struggle a little here, because that is actually quite the distance. Although actually I'm fairly certain even if we can't hit it with demolition, we can probably hit it with a rocket. Try demolition first though. That is just slightly out of reach, so we're just going to go with a rocket launcher here. I suppose you could make the argument that's a little excessive. But I feel it's not worth taking chances in these situations. Rolling. I'm on it. And from here again, we're just going to continue gently creeping forward toward the objective. Let's go! Then he can't you really overwatch from here, so... Oh, he gets a free overwatch anyway. Rolling. We'll start by bringing Morrigan just to here. And then we'll pop her in this uh, half cover here. Just trying to make sure she's protected on all sides at all times, and... Right. I'd taken that for a mech, but it's actually an Andromedan. That's not such a big deal. We're still plenty distance away from this here. So the important thing, though, we'll be getting tied to a position where he can get off uh, all his shots against it. And we'll also bring Blue up as well. As what we'll probably do when, we can, when the time comes to take that Andromedan... I suspect we will go for a flare first, highlight it, we'll hit it for what we can with Ty, hopefully finish it off, and then if we can't finish it off, we'll consider a frost bomb. Lock and load, doubters. On the oh, move. shoot, another little misclick there. Quite a few of those today, unfortunately. Overwatch. We'll just pop them on Overwatch for the moment. On Overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. And here, they are moving, so we could potentially go with the kill zone Overwatch here. I believe uh, Gamble does have AP rounds. Do those show up on the weapon? Yes. So with AP rounds, I see no reason to not go for a kill zone here, essentially. Nothing gets past me. Set up ambush. Hopefully this will activate the pod and then with luck we may even get a second round of watches off against all of these guys. I'm not sure if we killed that there. Enemy I think destroyed. we did. I think that's its corpse. But anyway, there's definitely one more, and with a bit of luck, we'll kill this one as well. And as hope, we've got all three of them outright. Or that we've got two of them outright, and we've wounded the Andromedan, which is a really, really good result. Good news as well is Morrigan is still slightly out of its uh, effective range. So we move blue up to here. Uh, we'll cast a flower on that thing. We can't cast a flower, and it's just out of range, right? Oh dear. So that said, here's what we'll try. We will uh, try killing it, and then we can stagger it with blue with a bit of luck. We'll just check his aim on that. Minus the defense and minus the low cover. That would put him on, what? 80. Even if it retains the defense, that's fine. Yeah, we should be able to kill this easily enough here. Good copy, moving on. 
They will start by just demolishing that cover there. In fact, we may... No, plus we would probably be overkill for what we're planning here. And I think I'd like a uh, boss to get the kill here. If he doesn't, not a big deal. Flash just goes into the scoop suite, it's guaranteed. Stay down! The only big thing here will be just moving Morrigan a little bit to try and ensure she isn't accidentally revealed during this process. So we'll pop her there. Position confirmed. And in the meantime, we'll stagger that thing. And this way, it only has one AP next turn. And as we saw with T last time round, it can't move an attacker as a single action. So, so this is now not really tactically significant anymore. Though as a thought, perhaps we could try for a dead eye shot to just kill it. No. We'll just take a regular sniper shot here. And that way, if something really, really nasty drops in, we uh, should still be fine. As we'll have a really high damage attack on hand to deal with it. And now it just becomes a question of who you want to get the kill, really. Slick has a promotion. Uh, blue does not, boss does not, tide does not, I am fairly certain gamble has one, gamble has one, right. I think we'll get it with blue here. We'll just reload first, and then we'll get the pistol kill. Just save the bullets, essentially. Received a notification from Bradford to say that's it. Affirmative. Moving out. So, just for the moment, we'll. Uh... Do you know? Actually, we may just throw the battle scan here, try and work out what's inside there, if anything. And that doesn't seem to spot anything, which is frankly actually a little worrying. Never mind. Closing on target position now. Moving to designated position. So we will uh, continue just reload here, and oh, then yeah. we'll be ready for getting into turn. position. Time probably doesn't need a reload as he's still got plenty of ammo on hand. Slick will give a crew a reload though. Locked and loaded. Let's take them down from here, Delta. And once again, we are approaching the end of our recording time here, so we'll put a short break in the video as usual. Uh, please don't go anywhere, and I will see you in just a moment. Hello and welcome back. We have just quickly reloaded the get here game there, in the uh, just in the break. As I noticed, there was a slight repeating sound from uh, this building here footsteps or something, I'm not sure what was causing that, perhaps it was a glitch from where we first killed these enemies here, but at any rate, we've reloaded the game and that seems to have gotten rid of that effectively. So, no real effects there, but just wanted to be uh, up and honest with everyone about that. For those who wonder if there's little changes going on between uh, parts and think that means something. And if you did, well done for spotting it. Heading out. Moving to designated coordinates. 
And here, I think we're gonna stop bringing Gamble up now. Sell a copy. Rolling. Roger that. Just Men that, if we do need that uh, acid bomb, it's there and ready to use. Roger that. I'm also just quickly pop the one over watch here, so if someone does come through the door. Very accurate. Very Fortunately deep. it didn't, but we could have had a couple of shots off against it there. So let's crack this open. I am nervous at this point because there's definitely at least one pod left on this map. We haven't had the all clear from Bradford. So we may start just by moving Ty up to the roof here. See what we can see. Heading there now. And with a bit of luck, if we do spot something, we may even be able to flank it from above here, which would be really nice. Confirmed. Morrigan will just bring to the edge here. Now. I don't think there'll be anything down this side of the building. But it's a good thing we did check, because there's a whole four of them. I don't know whether that's one pod which is oversized or two. I'm going to guess it's two. In any case, I'm really, really glad we decided to do that. As now we can start making preparations for it. May even just bring Gamble Stepping over to the left here. Put Morgan in a concealed those watch just for now. Actually, we'll pop uh, a couple of people on the watch as well. Secure that area. And we'll check if Boss has a yellow move to cover from here. He does, so we'll pop him on the watch as well. Sniper mode. Don't need to get up close and personal. And worryingly, this does seem to be moving as a single pod here, which I'm not fond of. Let's have Morrigan just quickly change That's spots here, see if you can spot something a bit more. I'm fairly certain we have an enemy in one of these few tiles here. I can't remember if one moved to there or if it moved outside, but I think it's in one of those few tiles. Right. And we will move uh, Tyre to here, so that with a bit of luck, he won't be spotted as he does this, but more importantly, Next turn, he may be able to run forward uh, and then uh, run to one of these or just drop down here, and then he'll be able to flank these guys from above or put some serious hurt on. Uh, with someone else opening up with a grenade. We'll start by moving slick. And as hoped, we haven't been spotted there, so. Again, we're going to continue bringing him forward just a little bit. But perhaps we should leave him where he is, actually. I think we will leave him where he is, actually, yeah. Go, go, go! And hopefully, this thing here will. Uh, yeah, as hoped, it's preventing. Uh, us from seeing any enemies, or the, the enemies from seeing us there. Got it covered. Moving over, watch. On my way. And we may as well go for um. Or should we move forward? And... No, we'll, we'll go for an overwatch here. We'll just go for an overwatch. Moving to overwatch. I do. And that is definitely a single group. Armor still home. Not even close. Jump side. Cold blood. 
solid scumbag. My thoughts exactly, boss. And we have a shot against this officer here, but it's in high cover and it has a lot of defense. I'm not sure Slick would like shooting that boss, I have to be honest. So we do have a couple of options here. Uh, perhaps the first one would be to just axe this thing and move it to overwatch. We could also... No, a dead shot wouldn't be worth it. Actually, this is a guaranteed crit if we do it with Shadow Strike. I sort of think that's too good an opportunity to ignore. So I may regret this in a moment, but we do always have the moment begin. Although when you're given a guaranteed crit with a shotgun, care of. you've got to be crazy not to go for it, let's be frank. And she can't take that implacable move yet as that thing will shoot at her. Now we do have a shot on that heavy mech, and I think we'll take that. We'll start with the standard shot and then we may... Well, actually, can we flare it? We don't quite have enough range, so we'll... Uh, we'll just paint these two here. As the goal here is going to be, move the mechs over watch, and then we'll have Ty kill one of these. I think we'll have him kill the uh, shield bearer, to be honest. As that's going to be slightly more of a pain in the arse than what we'll hope to be a single attack from a Stone Lancer against a Mimic Beacon. Deflection. How much would that? So that wouldn't be enough to kill it. Could we freeze the stun lancer? No, he's just out of range. So who else do we have to play with? Right, that overwatch has been removed now, actually, so... If we were to go here... Let's see what we can do with the pistol. He has AP rounds. If this hits, it kills it. Let's try a pistol shot here. That's unfortunate. We knew it was a possibility, but it's unfortunate nonetheless. However, we will move Morrigan up just a tad here. Moving to position. Just to try and spread the squad out and ensure, basically, that they're too far apart for this thing to even consider using its uh, rockets. And we have four moves left here. So let's try the uh, fire weapon here. It just doesn't work. It's not the end of the world, but the goal is to get a kill here. And we have gotten that kill. So this shouldn't be too hard to mop up now with a little uh, with a little luck. So we'll start by just storming straight over to this thing. Chain shot it for, frankly, what must be a guaranteed kill. And probably even a single shot kill. Yeah, that's hoped. Target neutralized. Looks like something over here. Oops, I did it. And I would like to have gotten Slick into a position where he could just run up and flank that thing, but it doesn't seem that's going to work. We could try this. And I don't think that'll blow up that uh, explosive crate he stood right next to. 
Let's give it a try. Worst that could happen is he dies horribly. Rockets away. I think that went pretty well overall. Let's go. We'll bring our uh, Let's take command them down over here. Oh dear, those guys have chosen an awkward spot to come in. That's a very awkward spot, in fact. Right. But our moment beacon is ready. So we'll start by just planting the X4 charge here. So that we are ready to uh, bug out whenever we need. One five status confirmed. X four charges are armed. Move to the extraction point for immediate evac. And of course, the other thing we can do is if we don't move with boss, he'll get an overwatch shot. So by opening this door, uh, he'll be in position, ready to overwatch. We'll see if I move slick first, and then we'll just pop him on Overwatch as well. So we're not quite maximising the firepower here as much as I'd like, but we're doing our best to maximise firepower. And we'll try moving up the side of the building here, going with the grapple. Is that might give us. I was going to say it might give us just a little more distance to play with, but as it turns out, it means we haven't got any at all. Not really anything well, though. We will very, very quickly grab this loot with Ty as well, and then we will uh, move back to intercept that reinforcement pod. And it's a superior stock, which is nice. Tech guys will love this. Though frustratingly, he's going to be just out of range to uh, participate in this fight going forward. So we'll just bring him as close as we can. Got it covered. We'll have watch it there, Huey. And then we will bring uh, Colin up as well. Evaluate sector. And this way, yeah, we're only getting three of watches, but it's better than none. What's happened there? The boss doesn't seem to have gotten his free Overwatch, which is odd. I mean, when it happens, it happens, but that is strange. So here's the plan. Oh shoot! Uh, actually, that is still a couple of tiles further forward. No, that wouldn't work, actually. The goal there would have been to try and get Morrigan to move up. Uh, just to a spot where she could get a throwing axe kill, or that kill this thing and then throwing axe that, but I don't think that would work anyway. So, let's bring Ty up to here. He does still have a grenade, and we'll see what we can do with that. We may just uh, grenade these two here, and that way it frees up everyone else to take out uh, this advent trooper over here. He may even get a promotion out of this, which would be nice. And stupidly, I seem to have neglected to actually blow up that Lance's cover there. Not really my finest moment, to be perfectly frank. Right. 
Well, there's always a chance we'll credit and kill it. Let's go for it. There's no harm at this point. Well. That's a little embarrassing, to say the least. We also do need to reload a uh, blue here. Which is going to cost us a precious action. A uh, little worried about that, actually. So we'll move uh, Slick right up here. Good Hopefully, time. he'll be able to get a... Uh, that's a reasonably high chance hit. So is Morrigan's axe. And here we'll just try a uh, shot. If it hits, it'll kill it. And that's gone well enough. Target eliminated. Menace one five. All hostile contacts near your position have been eliminated. Move to rendezvous for extraction. Confirm new stance. And we'll just send the turn there. We'll call down the Sky Ranger, and we will get out of here. Bring your knee back. Rolling. Rolling out. Moving to designated position. Hidden out. Roger that. Secure that position. Just in time. I'm out of here. Let's go. Oops. I'm gone. Heading home. Let's go. And there we go. Right there. Seems like mission accomplished to me. Menace one five, status confirmed. X four charges detonated. Not exactly one of the fastest missions we've uh, ever done there. We killed a lot of enemies. We didn't take any wounds. We didn't even need to use the mimic beacon. So by and large, I think that's gone quite well. It's also is. Uh, Necessary promotions as well. I think we'll have a couple of those. We may have a third with a bit of luck with the after mission XP. And we'll probably do that when we get back to the barracks, just as we are approaching the end of our uh, recording time. But again, this is what we like to see. Most under fire, not even the begin, just blank. So that's a mission which has gone really well in my book. are making it look easy out there, Commander. All thanks to you. And we've got the three promotions we wanted, so we'll deal with those when we get back to the barracks. Uh, I don't think we've acquired new loot. We've got the superior stock, but that's about it. The destruction of this facility marks an important step towards the total elimination of the Avatar Project, Commander. Your team is to be commanded. So, We'll put a short break in the video here, uh, and then we'll do promotion, so don't go anywhere, and I will see you in just a moment. Hello and welcome back. So we've got three promotions to deal with, we'll start with Ty. Who has acquired what is, uh, frankly, not necessarily a particularly useful ability, but then... Again, we could use that, I think, uh, to get a few nice benefits. Uh, if we set up an ambush, we can hunker down rather than overwatch, and then we could maybe use him to open fire on the next turn against a tough enemy in conjunction with Kiko. So it's not one that I'd necessarily consider to be a great one, but we can get some use out of it. This one here is the interesting one. So Saturation Fire is the <coughs> sort of more area effect, I suppose, uh, perk here. It's a cone-shaped area, you attack every enemy in that area. Uh, cover can be damaged or destroyed. This one I frankly don't like. The cone is extremely thin, and I really do mean extremely thin. Shots aren't guaranteed to hit, cover isn't guaranteed to be destroyed, and frankly it's quite rare, particularly in a class which isn't always hugely mobile, to uh, 
to get all that to be able to get into a position where you can line up shots and multiple enemies at once, so I tend not to use that. Rupture by comparison. Rupture guarantees a critical hit, which is great. But more than that, uh, the target in the future takes plus three damage from all attacks. Uh, I don't think that combines with stocks, but it does mean, for example, that rather than, uh, say, doing... Uh, a 10 damage, and 8 damage, and 8 damage would do a 15 damage, a 11 damage, and 11 damage. So, by and large, it does tend to make up for a uh, chain shot. Chain shot may be slightly better against really, really heavily armoured stuff, uh, like Andromedans, or like um, Gatekeepers when they show up. But again, rupture the plus 3 damage, maybe not so much. So I think we'll go with Rupture here, I think it's a sensible choice. It's also good because it is a guaranteed crit, it's not just likely to crit. And as a result of that, it means that you will be able to get a guaranteed crit on enemies who aren't in cover. Or who are, you know, who, who can't take cover, like Chrysalids or Berserkers, and who are generally very, very beefy opponents. So Rupture's the way to go there. We've also got a promotion for Gamble, whose aim is now climbed to 108 which gives us really, really good odds against basically anything. So here, aim is the one we've just had for, uh... There we go. Tie. Steady hands is one I like more. If you didn't move last turn, you gain plus 10 aim, plus 10 crit chance. And since snipers generally aren't particularly mobile, this combines very, very well with that. Plus you get the bonus crit chance, and crit chance, yeah, okay, aim, it's nice to have. But snipers tend to lack for that anyway, and crit chance is really, really, really useful. So we'll be going with that. Worth noting out, uh, Hunker Down gives you plus 20 aim on the first shot. Steady Hands is applied to everything, so for example, you combine it with Kill Zone for some really high damage, high crit chance shots. Here we go. So he's unlocked Serial there, which is really, really, really good. Is if you kill an enemy with uh, your actions, you get an action back. So basically, provided you can keep killing opponents with a shot, you can just keep on taking more and more shots. So that's great. We could perhaps blow up a ton of enemies or weaken them all, and then Slick could finish off the whole group at once. Certainly, that's going to synergize really, really well with uh, our Overwatch abilities. In the meantime, Hail of Bullets uh, might be quite good. But then Salvo is very, very useful as well. As Salvo means we can launch that grenade, you know, potentially knock a few enemies out of cover and then combine that with this serial power just for lots of uh, damage against multiple weakened opponents. So we'll go with that. We may also look for a PCS just to increase his aim, I think. And with that, we'll head quickly back to the uh, strategic layer. And we've knocked off a whole four blocks there, which is absolutely great. That's given us a lot of breathing room. I'll just have a quick look at their bonus there. Right. So at this point, we are quickly going to move to make contact with uh, the resistance here. For Brazil. And then once we've made contact, finish off our supply collections and things, I think we'll probably end the, end the video here. As There's two missions here we're going to take. We'll most likely uh, take the Codex break coordinates. So. Attempting to establish local regional... We've got an urgent communication coming in for you now, Commander. You have made considerable progress against the aliens over the past month, Commander. I hope that your ongoing efforts will only lead to further success. And we've had a good month there, we've achieved a lot. We've also got a lot of monthly income, which is great. Intel were, uh, frankly, probably a little short at the moment, so we may skip on revealing this. We also have to worry about a retaliation strike, so it's possible 
that we're going to have two or three missions just in a row here. We'll deal with the Codex Brain, then we'll probably get a Resistance one, and I... Unfortunately, I think that is going to be Chrysalids, and I hate Chrysalids. But we'll see what we can do at any rate. So we'll finish unlocking this area. I do not think I could have predicted this outcome, though it is intriguing. But first, we've got our powered armor upgrade, which is fantastic. This is powered armor, codenamed Goliath. Uh, completed July 27th, 2035. From what we've seen with the aliens' activities and their lack of regard for human life, preserving those of us that are still around has to become a task of equal importance to eliminating the alien threat itself. The success of this entire undertaking hinges on our ability to keep our soldiers healthy and ready for battle at a moment's notice. In working toward that aim, our latest armor prototype utilizes more of the alien allies than we've ever previously assembled, and as expected, the durability and potential for damage mitigation is extremely impressive. Initial trials show the armor to be capable of withstanding a direct hit from focused plasma at 5 meters, enough to so to say increase survivability by a substantial margin. I plan on advising the senior staff not to inform the troops of any perceived toughness associated with the suit. I would hate for our forces to grow reliant on it despite our best intentions. Signed Chen. But most importantly, however, we've unlocked the war suit, which is really, really heavily armoured, and is capable of mounting tier 2 heavy weapons, and the wraith suit, which, in addition to the grappling hook, also allows you to temporarily move through walls and is therefore awesome. So, with all that done, I think we'll grab the uh, Archon Autopsy next. Or Actually, let's have a quick look. We'll see what's available in the Shadow the Chamber. Idea that despite the Codex's best efforts to resist our intrusion into the Advent Network, we somehow came away with a set of coordinates leading to an otherwise uninhabited region. The aliens certainly keep us on the move, one way or another. And given the Archon only gives the Fusion Blade, which isn't hugely, hugely useful for my playstyle, I think we'll go for the Encrypted Codex data here. contact with the local resistance forces in this region, Commander. We're ready to move on the coordinates we pulled from the Codex. And, uh, we're just gonna start collecting the supply drop while we wait for that, uh, retaliation strike. If we had... Oh, actually, no, here's what we'll do first. We're going to unequip, uh, this armor, the exosuits, and we're gonna start the process of converting those into it's dark, uh, it's dank, and it's suits. mostly metal. This ship isn't all that different from the old base. Yeah, I have a mod here which just uh, allows you to upgrade exosuits into war suits. In the long term. It is actually slightly more expensive than uh, building them from scratch, I think. As it's the same cost overall. But on the other hand, you save yourself on an Illyrium core, which is nice. And we will, of course, be spending Illyrium cores on heavy weaponry. We'll get started right away, Commander. I'll send word when the project is complete. Just while we're doing that, we'll uh, quickly run and grab some supplies. Avenger plotting new course. And as expected here, we've got a retaliation site, so... I hope you've enjoyed this part. And... I hope you'll join me next time when we take on Operation Smoking Witch to stop an elephant retaliation in the Arctic. And given the fact that we have an enemy unknown here, this is going to be the one with chrysalids, so if you want to see me come up against an enemy type that I really, really, really hate, 
you'll probably want to tune in for that one. So until then, my name is Green Red Star Rocket. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and good night.